so now we return to uh, the Leaving Cert 2008 Higher Maths Paper 1. We're going to look at question 2 now. Okay, now question 2 were, uh, is uh, three parts. The first part is a quadratic that we have to describe in the form x plus a all squared plus b. Okay, this can be actually answered visually. A few calculations are necessary. That's how we isolate a certain constant v that will make the equation a perfect square, okay, which means both roots at the same number. Okay, therefore, the coefficient of x must be the sum of that root to itself, in other words, the, the root added to itself. Okay, clearly, this must be 5, okay, so a equals 5. Then the square of this number would be the equation's constant if b didn't exist. Okay, so we subtract 5 squared from the constant in the original equation, in other words, 32 minus 5 squared, that gives us 7, so b is 7. In summary, x plus 5 all squared plus 7 is the answer. We go to part b, it's another quadratic we're given, x squared minus 6x plus 1. Alpha and beta are the roots, but we must not only just get alpha and beta, we must manipulate them into x squared plus b squared. Okay, the sum of the squares of the roots. Okay, so um, we're going to have to use the explicit solution for quadratics, which should be in our memories. This, these two well-known equations give the two roots of a quadratic. We can plug in our values for a, b, and c, which numerically we get that, which of course, which we simplify. And it's interesting, it, although we have a square root in there, um, it might be useful to handle this algebraically. We're going to assign uh, 7 over 2 to u, and the root of 45 over 2 to v. Okay, so that means we can express alpha and beta as u plus v for alpha, and u minus v for beta. Now, this will turn out to be handy in part 2. Okay, now, at the moment, we have to get alpha squared plus beta squared. So we can express that in terms of u, u and v. We expand out the squares. There are some cancellations. We get 2u squared plus 2v squared. And then we can plug in our values for u and v there. Okay, and we get the answer fairly quickly as 47. Now, section 2 of this part of the question is a bit more complicated. We have to get the 1 over the cube of alpha and 1 over the cube of beta and add them. Okay, we can reuse our u and v here, and we see um, that it could become quite complicated, especially when we expand it out. Um, now, what we've done here is uh, multiply above and below uh, of those two fractions by the denominator of the other fraction. It should be fairly clear-cut what has to be done in order to manipulate the, the numerators. But quite happily, we see the complicated denominator. Okay, when we plug in our values for u and v, it turns out to be 1. In fact, this should be checked by the student. So we need to only work out the numerator. So we check out the numerator, expand it out. It is fairly complicated, but there are cancellations, and we get 2u cubed plus 6u v squared. With no sur further simplification possible, our values for u and v can be substituted with the numerical values. Okay, so we stick in the numerical values there and try, uh, well, rather hope, that we don't get anything too complicated. And happily enough, we get a fairly simple, uh, though high quantity in integer, 3 to 2. Now we look at this final part of this question, part C. We're given uh, the addition of two fractions, but one is a over b and the other is b over a. Um, we're asked to prove that the value can never lie between minus 2 and plus 2. And we're given a hint that we should treat it as two cases, one where a and b have both the same sign and where a and b have differing signs. Okay, now we're going to use a substitution to deal with this again. We're going to let u equal a over b. And first we're going to the first case is where a and b have the same sign. Okay, this means u will always be positive. Now we need to create an inequality. Okay. So let's say the uh, anything squared must be greater than zero. That's a, a well 
accepted the truth. And we'll actually subtract 1 from u before squaring it, so that our inequality becomes u minus 1 all squared, greater than or equal to 0. Now we expand and divide across by u, so we get that expression, which, when simplified, will give us u minus 2 plus 1 over u is uh, greater or equal to 0. And we can see how we've got very close to the answer there, so that u plus 1 over u it must be greater than or equal to 2. Um, and taking out our substitution, we see that we have one half of the, uh, the point proved, which is that a over b plus b over a must be either equal or greater than 2. In other words, cannot be between 0 and 2. So the next part, the next and final part, is where we have different signs. Okay, so we can say that a negative i square is always less than 0. Okay, so we can say that. And as before, we expand and divide across by u. And again, what we get is a case where we can isolate 2 on one side of the inequality, uh, or minus 2 rather, we must uh, subtract 2 from either side, so that we get minus u minus 1 over u must be less than or equal to minus 2. And then, using our substitution, or substituting in a and b for u, or a over b for u, we, we actually get uh, what was required, in other words, that uh, when a and b have different signs, a over b plus b over a must cannot lie between 0 and minus 2. And that is our answer.